Oh, great. We're already live, are we? Fantastic. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm going to share our journey through um, to a structured training programme. Um, before we start, I just wanted to say that we are we really value our employees and they're talented, effective and really committed to what we do. I think there's a delay between Zoom, what we're hearing on Zoom, and then what's been streaming. And I think that's why. Yeah, there's a delay. Just don't turn it off again. Okay. Right then. So before I start, I just wanted to say that we really value our employees. They're talented, effective, and really committed to what we do. And supporting them in their roles and nurturing their talent is the heart of the academy programs. At the outset, there were two main challenges for us. Firstly, um, industry relevant skills are very variable across employees entering the company. And secondly, our annual commitment to training had increased as part of innovation and expansion. Um, so consultation with senior management and fieldwork staff indicated the range of internal and external factors we needed to consider. The national shortage of experienced senior fieldwork staff, there's a wide variability in preparedness for industry, dependent on their entry route, and um, staff need more preparation in transition to senior roles. Um, but there's also a perception within archaeology that corporate skills development is sort of undesirable and there's maybe a little bit uh, of reluctance to sort of pursue those. And then there's also the issue of trying to monitor and deliver training to a dispersed workforce. How can we best do that so to allow staff to meet and collaborate? Um, there's an awful lot of time pressure on the types of work that um, our fieldwork staff are doing. They have long days and we often have short notice changes to their schedule. So we need to have a way to ensure that training uh, is scheduled effectively and that the training that is scheduled for people doesn't sort of disappear because you know a new project arrives and you know everybody gets assigned to that and then in the mix in the whole mix of that there's the the, the global pandemic uh, that definitely impacted working practice and forced everybody to consider aspects of health and well-being um, and good training has a huge potential to assist with that along with that our um, own company expansion and introduction of new innovative processes and things has a direct impact on our training needs. Um, there's also the cost of training. Um, the digital technology and learning online has been very helpful, but to deliver good quality training, there are increased preparation costs with that. Um, we need to ensure that the online training is actually as effective as one-to-one -one or in-person training as that happens. And then the company growth has presented some logistical challenges for us as well, associated with training larger teams of people. The channels of communication tend to be more formal. Um, and so I think our training schedule, just our, our training programs just needed to be more rigorous in their approach. Okay. So to develop the solution, uh, we carried out a training needs analysis um, and we outlined five key goals that we wanted to address. We wanted to have a structured training program with clear milestones for progression. We wanted to focus on addressing core fieldwork skills and shortages within the company um, and to sort of innovate more on delivery, making use of what we've learned during the pandemic with online delivery and the sort of many uh, software uh, pieces that are available to do that. Um, but we also wanted to ensure that this training programme provided enhanced learning opportunities for the staff so that they could we can nurture their talent and they can uh, use the training programme in a more custom way to help them navigate their career path, but also develop their own specialisms and sort of really feel that their work is satisfying to themselves as an individual, as well as benefiting the needs of the company. And at the heart of everything, we wanted to take into account the needs of the individual as a, you know, the ARS way really is to put the employee at the core of what we do. Okay, and so we used those goals to so think about how the, the, the training program will be structured. The training and the whole company away days have been a feature of our approach for more than 15 years. And 10 years ago, we introduced an onboarding process with a block, um, three-day block of training and skills assessment as part of the induction. 
This year, we're taking the training to a new level and introducing a training week in July. Um, we're very excited about this opportunity to train in this way. The whole week is going to be dedicated to training and collaboration with a whole company session, small group workshops and evening events. So it's a really a great chance for us to network within the company, to open up discussion and, um, you know, mitigate the difficulty of delivering all company training to a, a very dispersed workforce. Okay, so we have what we call the ARS way, uh, which contains, um, so I'm having a, a little bit of a technical issue here, sorry. So as part of the induction process, all employees undertake assessment and establish their skills, the training and any other relevant needs before they become active in their role. Taking the individual at the heart of what we do, uh, we look at the development of the person as two pillars. The first one is developing the person, and the second part of that is the technical skills. Within that, we have um, certain areas that we wanted to cover as a company. So we wanted to include professional development and personal development within the developing the person pillar. And on the other side of that, we have the technical skills, the field work, post excavation. And then health and safety fits in on both sides of those, um, you know, for obvious reasons. Okay. And we have... But then, so... Okay, so we have five areas of competence which fit which fit in with the with the um, sorry. So we have five areas of competence that fit in within the two pillars, and within each areas of these competence, we have a structured set of learning aims which we've mapped across to the national occupational standards. Um, the, 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 the staff focus on each five of these uh, simultaneously throughout the whole course of the program. Um, each, air, each of the five areas is led um, by a lead trainer and they're assigned to drive the training forward and to support for each area of competence. So the program has an alignment to our company fieldwork roles, um, beginning with a trainee archaeologist, moving up through archaeological officer, the assistant project officer and the project officer. And progressing through each academy programme ensures the employee learns and consolidates the skills they need for their role and prepares them if they're looking for more responsibility for the next step. Um, it also helps them to identify the areas of professional practice they'd like to enhance and potentially, potentially develop their specialists, as I already mentioned. And the programmes differ in length, so ranging from six months, the trainee archaeologist level, to the three years. And, and that's really based on how long we think staff generally need how much time they need to accumulate the relevant experience and have the opportunities to work on different types of sites and projects. And there's also a way to pause the training or to progress more quickly um, than the standard time. Um, so the whole programme is linked to our appraisal process in a positive way. There we go. So if we take a look at our trainee programme, you'll see that the aim is to ensure there's a base level of skills for those entering fieldwork with limited experience. Um, so the aim of the training programme is to ensure trainees are safe, competent and have a positive mental attitude aligned to the company's mission. And they're able to carry out basic archaeological field work to a high professional standard in line with the responsibility of their role. And then we have um, six outcomes um, which they pursue throughout the whole uh, training programme. And then at the end, they, uh, are, they go through their appraisal pro probation review, which is part of the appraisal process, and they eventually secure their position as an archaeological officer. And the rationale behind that is that if they're not achieving those, uh, the, fi the five prior goals, then they're probably not going to be competent in their role and therefore not safe and will need uh, more training. Okay. So we want them to be a confident archaeological practitioner, capable of working under supervision. We're not expecting people to sort of launch into the field and um, know exactly what to, to do. Um, they have the ability to integrate with the team and communicate clearly so that we can achieve the project objectives in a timely and um, profitable way. We want them to have achieved the foundation of skills and knowledge on which to build their expertise. So really, the trainee archaeologist programme is, is, a, is a level up for um, all of the varying, variable uh, routes into archaeology. Some may have um, you know, attended a university course and done a small amount of um, excavation. Others may have been volunteering since they were 12 and they have you know, a whole range of field skills. So we just want to level people up and sort of even the playing field for people. 
And we also wanted people to have a clear understanding of their future training and development goals. So the, the programme really encourages people to think about that, to collaborate with their colleagues and also just to learn from other people and, of course, teach because to teach is to learn twice. OK. Okay, and this is an example here of our trainee booklets. So this is sort of where the program really is recorded for the employee. And within that, there are obviously the, the learning standards. They're all mapped against the national occupational standards. So an employee has a clear view of why they're doing something and how that applies to any transferable skills and sort of national standards. Um, there's also a checklist in there. You can see on the top right hand of my screen, there's a trainee health and safety. And that has a list of all of the different learning aids, which are then signed off with the lead trainer and any comments um, are included in there. And when we have the reviews, and we have six monthly review um, as standard through all of the programmes, that's discussed with their line manager and we can then identify areas of training that they would like to focus on for the next six months. The employees all sign a learner agreement, so our success of the training relies both on the company and the employee recognising the benefits of the training programme. So the employees make a commitment to pursuing the programmes for the benefit of their career and the wider company. And you know, we wanted to return that and ensure that, they, that the employees are clear that we're also making that commitment to them. Um, the delivery method is a mix of internal and external training. We have some CIFA courses on there. Um, and there's a range of assessment methods. Um, Self-study and evaluation are a really key component of the theoretical aspects of the course, and they can be logged by the trainee in the, in the program book and discussed at the review. And they also have the opportunity to, um, you know, raise any training that they would like with me. We uh, sort of pursue providing that, um, you know, in a timely way, depending on what the training is. And at the moment, we're implementing a training and tracking tool um, to help ensure that the training commitments are upheld. Okay. And um, my final slide here. So I'm working on two screens, it's a little bit confusing. So okay, well, I wanted to leave you really with the um, with the comment that uh, we are still learning. Um, evaluation is a crucial and ongoing process for us. Uh, we use the benchmarks of the induction assessment and the annual appraisal process to inform the effectiveness on an individual level. We also hold monthly employee engagement meetings uh, and engagement surveys to receive wider feedback. And um, we work with senior management to monitor the effectiveness uh, in the field and make use of um, internal data um, to evaluate and improve the programmes. And there would be things like uh, our employee engagement meetings. We regularly receive feedback. We have a, an employee engagement survey. Um, the rollout of our trainee programme was very well received and had a significant impact on an individual level so in preparing people for uh, working in the fields. But there was also a notable impact on the company performance and you know, uh, achieving deadlines. So we'll be rolling out the further three programmes this year, uh, the, the um, archaeological officer, the assistant project officer and the peer uh, project officer programmes, um, along with our training week, which is a really exciting trial for us. It's an extension of our uh, uh, away days that we've always done. Um, and we're really looking forward to that. Um, and we'll be evaluating the return on expectations aligned to the goals that I outlined previously. And of course, the um, all important return on investment to demonstrate the value and justification for the program and that will really benchmark how um, the programs proceed. Thanks very much. <laughs>